Doing the paint prep on an old wrinkly vehicle has got to be the most tedious and boring thing to watch. So I fast forwarded to the best bit where I'm actually getting the paint on. But take my word for it, in the last three weeks I've done 120 hours of prep on this Landro. Making a video about paint prep is a bit of a challenge because it's so hard to see what needs to be seen on a small screen. So what I'll do is I'll just keep you up with the play and the progress. So what I'm doing with the bonnet is I've applied paint stripper to the galvanised area here because when it was painted that was just blown over. There was no masking. It had paint right up to here. So that's all been cleaned off. I've applied a paint stripper around the edges here as well because as you can see here there's flaky paint all the way around. So what I'm going to be doing is getting in and cleaning that right back to bare metal and feathering it in. Now you can see what I've got here. We've got a high spot which will have to have some panel beating attention and you can see how I've got rid of the harsh sharp edges of the flaked paint and feathered them in so that can be then primed over and will have the appearance of just a smooth continuous first coat of paint all the way up to the edge. As I'm hand sanding around the spare wheel securing disc, I'm looking at each of my rivet heads and I'm seeing different problems with each. We've got starring in the paint here which means that the paint has moved and cracked. And we've got some here, there's dirt inclusions on this one. Uh, this one a little further back has got a really deep flake because when people have painted it they haven't rubbed down properly around here. That means I'm going to have to take all of these back to sound paintwork. Each one has its own challenges. I don't want to go mad with the orbital sander and sand off the tops of them because that makes them look like they've had the tops of them sanded off by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. So I stay away from that and I hand sand around all of them. Instead of sanding sideways, 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 sideways around something which will give you grooves in your paint you'll see it with shiny paint you will see dips this way that way and the other around every rivet if you sand like that so at least until I feathered out a couple of layers of paint I only sand in towards the rivet all the way around I should be using a block perhaps for the very best results but as long as you don't push with your fingertips, you will be okay. Um, it's so easy to get grooves in the paint through through a bit of ham-fistedness. What I should be doing perhaps is having a little play with a scraper first. You know, this Land Rover was first painted limestone white and then it was given a rather nice full respray inside and out at some stage with, lime, with um, marine blue. Then some clown painted it with uh, spray can bright green. So I'm pulling this off and I'm going to have to get the wire wheel in here and remove all the spray can green. After the spray can green, it got painted with green fence stain with a brush. And then the chap who sold it to me had blown it over with a quick coat of primer, covering absolutely everything. The door handles, the galvanised components, most of the headlights and the taillights, nothing had been masked up properly. This grey was just everywhere. I've got a problem here with uh, stress cracks around where the door check strap attaches. 
and I've got to do a little bit of welding there and then if you have a look at this this is one of the most complex parts on a Land Rover this is where four panels come together and get spot welded on top of each other it's a prime place for rust starting now you'll see on this side this is all processed and finished and done on this side on the driver's side I'm part way through the process it's been cleaned back wire brushed everything's been dug out of the cracks and they've been filled with seam sealer I've welded up the stress cracks around the check strap and what I'm going to be doing next is filling with cavity wax when it's painted this whole pillar from top to bottom but right now I've got stress cracks to deal with these guards have got stress cracks in every corner both of them during the lockdown I can't get anybody to weld it up with TIG so I went online and asked the great Land Rover brain on the interweb and the guys on the pages suggested JB Weld they said just give it a good scratch get all the paint off rub it up with some hard 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 sandpaper and JB Weld patches over it so I'm about to do that this one here I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on the outside and that will stop the JB Weld squidging through the crack so there we go there's a piece of masking tape cut to length I'll just plaster that up on the inside and then I can liberally wipe some JB Weld over this crack and call that fixed and then I'll mix up some more and I'll use it to glue these aluminium patches along the bottom lip here where the bottom lip is cracked in three places making it very very flexible it takes a full 24 hours to go off this stuff unless you can get some heat into it but that's okay I've got plenty of other stuff to do so you just mix it up 50% of the black 50% of the white mix them together until it becomes a uniform grey colour and then you can just um, wipe it into cracks and use it as a glue and repair pieces of casting with it it's strong enough to drill and tap and sand really good quality stuff I recommend everybody should have a tube of this just lying around for when you need it right now I'll just clamp this in place and leave it for 24 hours as I say I've got plenty of other stuff to do so this guard can go and sit in the corner and here we are the next day <coughs> pop these off oh it's glued on <laughs> that's alright a bit of a wiggle and I can break that off so I'll remove these, sand off the excess, and I'll end up with a very tidy looking high strength repair without having to call in the services of a specialist welder.
Now, another feature of Land, Land Rover bodywork is these long seams. I've had to devote a lot of time to cleaning these seams to get every last little flake of paint out so that when I prime and paint it looks like it's the original coat of paint and you can't see any clues of uh, other flaked coats of paints underneath. So it has to be done by hand, there's no way you can get in with a machine. Just a lot of scraping and sand sanding. I use a fairly rough sandpaper, this is all 150. Anything any finer, you're just going to take too long. So, rough it up with a 150, and then we give it an etch prime. Now, etch priming on aluminium, that's another thing that's very, very important. Um, you can't just paint over primer, over, yeah, sorry, you can't just paint over aluminium. Etch primer has a mild acid in it. I only buy it in a spray can because you need so little. All you need to do is just put a light mist over any bare aluminium and that will etch into the surface and allow your primer to stick. If you don't do this, you're wasting your time and money putting paint over it. You've got to use the etch primer. So as I say, just a bare alloy, just a mist. I give that five minutes to dry and I can start hitting it with some high build primer. And no bog, you'll see. I took a quarter of an inch of bog out of here. And now it's bog free. Now because of this lockdown business, I haven't had a single soul visit me in five weeks. And now look what happens as All soon right, as I I'll start painting. <laughs> you hear the odd car coming past too, the road is starting to get a little bit busy again. No tourists whatsoever, no camper vans, no boats on trailers. Things are very quiet on the road outside. painting method for two pot paints is called wet on wet and how you're supposed to do it is one wet coat leave it five minutes to tack off and then one more wet coat over the top and that's it I'm using a fast hardener because I've got a dust problem working outside so I want the paint to dry as quickly as possible that means that it won't flow out and give an absolutely glass-like finish, but that's okay. I'll have a slightly mottled but very, very shiny finish that's going to be incredibly durable, and I won't have any dust in it, which will be a bonus. All your bits and pieces get done separately, and then uh, bolted together in a couple of days once the paint is hard. So I've got paint on everything, under everything, between everything, and we shouldn't get any more of this dreaded Land Rover rust problem. The front panels of a vehicle are very prone to stone chips. So this paint that I've chosen is very, very chip resistant and I've even gone to the trouble of using a coarser grade sandpaper on the grill just to key in the paint a little deeper into the primer and I'm going to be laying on extra paint 
to compensate for the rougher sandpaper. So it'll still look shiny, but it will be absolutely keyed in to the primer on the front panel and on the front guards and should stop a lot of the stone chips down the line. Well, this video has been a little bit bitsy, hasn't it? But that's the nature of the beast when you're panelling and prepping and painting seven separate components. In the next video, we're going to be taking that rear tub off and seeing what lies underneath. But don't forget to call back, and we'll see you in the next video.